All right, thank you for joining us. It's time for us to move on to some other parts of sports tonight. But before we do that, uh, someone has graciously, I mean, a lot of people have graciously on Twitter um, sent us the FA Cup draw uh, that we just talked about a couple of minutes ago. So we're just going to quickly uh, run through some of the um, draws that have been made for the fourth round uh, of the FA Cup in England. Um, the winner of uh, Wimbledon, Liverpool, will meet Bolton. Um, the winner of Burnley Sports currently going on will meet, will, will meet Leicester. Um, Birmingham will meet West Bromwich Albion. Sunderland will meet the winner of Fulham and Wolves. Brighton will meet Arsenal. Arsenal qualified uh, with a 2 0 win over All City. It was a repeat of last year's final as well. Then you have Manchester City against Middlesbrough uh, as well, that uh, will be taking place. And uh, you have um, Cambridge United against Manchester United. I mean, these are uh, some selected fixtures for you of the FA Cup fourth round. We'll talk more about it later on. Uh, as we go along on Sports Tonight. But we must say thank you to those who have been sending us all of this uh, via Twitter on Sports Tonight. That's why I said 2015 is going to be a lot better because we will also rely on you uh, to feed us back with some of those breaking stories as you get them uh, while Sports Tonight is going on. But gentlemen, let's come back home. The new year is on. And um, the big one, they call it the Oscars of football in Africa. Oscars of African football, the 2014 Glow Cup Awards, just three days away. And now we're beginning to feel the frenzy, the tension. Who goes home with the top prize? Well, <laughs> it's a big question. Mm. But, you know, all of us Nigerians want uh, Vincent Yama because it's been quite a while. Uh, and incidentally, one of the special guests that Glow has invited, Kano Wankwa, was the last to win the award for Nigeria. So um, we are praying that um, a Nigerian Vincent Ayama should win it. But Tony, when you, when, you, when you look at all other <coughs> contenders, Yaya Toure is quite formidable. You know, you know what he has been doing? He, he has simply started from where he stopped last year. He's helping Man City week in, week out, play very well. He's going to the Nations Cup. So I don't know realistically how Vincent will have staged him. Mm. Oye is just being diplomatic. Uh, I think the direction is on, on the wall. The winner of, of Africa's top prize is very clear. Maybe la last year there was plenty of sentiment in favor of, Vince, uh, of uh, Mr. McKinnon. But even back then it was as clear as day to a blind man who the, who, who the winner was. And this time around, it is very, very difficult to see beyond Yaya Toure. Uh, he has had a phenomenal year. And it is very, very rare. Like we said, over in the past two decades, a goalkeeper hasn't won this award. So it will be uh, almost nothing short of a miracle mm. if Vincent Yama Walks so with this award. That is not to say that he's not good enough, but it just seems that ev everything is just is, is just stacked. The odds are, are massively stacked against him. Uh, the, other, the other categories where Nigeria have uh, hopes are in African Women's Footballer of the Year, African uh, uh, National Team of the Year. Those are those are awards that Nigeria can comfortably count on with. But for the top prize, African Football of the Year. I think uh, it, it would be a brave man to bet against uh, Yaya Toure winning for the third consecutive time. Hmm. Okay. We'll keep our eyes on it and uh, see what happens. It's just three days away. Uh, we'll see how it uh, pans out and uh, maybe some miracle on D-Day will happen. But, of course, we'll continue our build-up tomorrow uh, around uh, the countdown to the 2014 Glow Cup Awards. All right, let's um, come now and talk about this issue. It's a major one. Uh, and it concerns one player that we've talked about having plenty of promise. Uh, he was the first player to ever score a goal at the brand new Aqua Ibom Stadium uh, in New York, the nest of uh, champions, they call it. His name is Emmy Medwork. That guy is in the news, not for the right reasons, but for reasons that should make us cover our face in shame around the way we do transfers in Nigeria. Okay, let, let's spend some time and talk about MM Edward very quickly. Um, you are aware of what has been going on around MM Edward. Can you shed more light on, on the situation around MM Edward? Because the Nigerian Football Federation have also come out with a statement that they're going to investigate the controversy surrounding MM Edward and its transfer. Is it going to Norway? Is it going to Tunisia? And that's not what we want for this young lad. Well, well so let us not kid ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, the, the, the only difference is that MM Edward is now in the spotlight because, like you said, he scored the first goal um, in the first game played at uh, the U International Stadium, and he was so quite six goals. Yes, six he, goals in he, game, in he, he, he was quite brilliant last season. But these things have been going on in the Niger in Nigerian football. You mm. know, l l like you, let's put this one in context. 
you know, the story is that he signed for Salzburg of Norway. And um, he came back to Nigeria. I later discovered that another agent took him to Esperance, where we also learned that he, he, has, he, he, has, he has signed, you know, $150,000 for four and a half year contract for Salzburg. Might bug it to him. Then $300,000 for Esperance. Obviously, Dolphins will go for Esperance. But in all this, I think there's a systemic failure to him. Mm. What, 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 how do we embark on the transfer when a certain player has a, a different agent? Mm -hmm. Some taking him to Europe, some taking him to Africa. To, to Africa. And in, in, in all this, how do we begin to you know, structure Nigerian mm -hmm. football transfer policy in such a way that the players will be protected? When they argue that some of the players are illiterate, I don't, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to buy that idea because in South America and other parts of the world, they are illiterate players, but the system protects the players. The transfer should be very simple. You discuss with uh, the, play, the, the, the club that wants to buy and the, mm. and, and, mm. and, and the club mm. of the player. When you iron out, the, the player now discuss personal terms and he, he goes. So why is this so difficult? Why is an agent saying that a player that has been in Dolphins for three seasons, mm. from Aqua United, he played for Aqua Starlet, went to, from Aqua Starlet to Aqua United, then for Dolphins for three seasons, is now a player for an academy, A and B. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know uh, uh, the picture that you are seeing on your screen, the picture you are seeing on your screen, the picture of MMA Dog signing actually, you know, signing a pre-contract with a club in Norway. I mean, that, that's the picture that we're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, Medox signing a pre-contract in Norway, and uh, that's the genesis of the whole thing. He signed away, and we were told that what this guy was signing away was that he was signing that is a player of uh, the A and B Academy in Paracourt. Well, this is, this is, uh, this is the most, most, I don't, I don't know, I, I, words fail me to say this, but this, this is, this is nothing short of, you know, very, very fishy. Uh, how does a player who is, who has played for three professional clubs mm. in, uh, or, or in the past three seasons. This is another picture from the Norwegian club showing that. Uh, showing that uh, I'm, ready, I'm ready to roll. Well, well, we've seen that before. Uh, we saw John Michael Lee. Michael Lee. We've also seen. What does always seem to happen around Nigerian players? Remember the story of Imanda Lamineke, former African footballer of the year? The, 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 con the contention between him, Zamalek, MSV Duisburg of Germany, and Sports in Lisbon. We also remember the Sunday back case of just a few. It's preposterous. A player who, who played as a professional player for the past three seasons, to the best of my knowledge, for Dolphins, for Dolphins, for Dolphins suddenly becomes an academy an player. An academy, academy player. It, it just boils down to some certain basic questions that we don't ask and that we've always talked about on this platform. One, what kind of contracts do these players sign? With the club. Are they valid contracts? Are they enforceable contracts in, every, in, in any court of law? Are these contracts, can they be held up in scrutiny? Uh, can they be scrutinized by any uh, court of law as having fast? all the tenants, have you have all the, the conditions for filling a proper contract. Two, how do we go about the, um, um, securing the international transfer certificates of these players? For years, a lot of people have said that there is a kind of uh, underhand dealings, syndicates, cabal, so many kind of words have been used in the, in the football house that procure different kind of transfer certificates for these players. So a lot must be done now to ensure that these kind of things are not, because the truth is some people are feeding fat from a system that fails to protect the players and the clubs. Ordinarily, if indeed it belongs to an academy, what FIFA states is that when a player does get transferred, the academy from which was get discovered some gets some kind of compensation. All right. Well, we, we wanted to get across to Paraco, but it looks like we are not making any headway uh, getting out to, to Paraco to find out from an official of Dolphins of Paraco uh, about the MMA work situation. We, we'll keep trying once we're able to get through. Uh, we will let you know, but so far, it looks like we are not making any headway, getting across to Paraco to find out. All right, looks like we have um, China Achiru is joining us now uh, on the line from Paraco. China, I I'm sure you've listened to all that we've said, and you've seen the pictures we also posted just now on the screen. 